On today's Friday show, Senator Tommy Tuberville finally gives in. Montrose's annual candle walk is a huge success, and Montrose is full of very fast drivers. All that, an environmental report, school news, sports, and more coming up on the Friday show. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Colin Alguire, bringing you world news. The two major wars that continue to stretch onward between Israel and Hamas, as well as Russia and Ukraine, stand in very, very different situations. To start, Israel has received 200 cargo planes full of military equipment. These planes were sent by multiple undisclosed countries, and they were filled with ammunition, weapons, and armored cars. Since the start of the war, more than 10,000 tons of military equipment have been sent to Israel. In the other major hot war, Russia and Ukraine, the United States House of Representatives is waffling. U.S. President Joe Biden is attempting to persuade Republicans in Congress to send a fresh supply of equipment to Ukraine as the Ukrainians are running short on ammunition and other vital munitions. This is important because Russian President Putin has long felt that the United States will grow weary of helping Ukraine without a quick victory in sight. House Republicans are very much against using any more U.S. resources to aid Ukraine. They don't want the U.S. involved in general, but they remember when President Zelensky did not help then-President Trump get any dirt on Joe Biden during the 2020 campaign. That hasn't stopped President Biden or the Democrats from pushing for more aid to Ukraine. I do not expect this aid to pass unless it is accompanied by a favor of Republican demand. Changes to border policies. As we get closer to the 2024 election, we see Republicans are doing everything they can to make sure that a Republican is elected, which means they might not take yes for an answer. But letting Ukraine fall to Putin's hands while Picking Israel as a winner will only serve to tell other countries that get attacked that America is not a reliable ally. That's all I have for you this week. So, Jack, I hear you've got some massive news about U.S. Senator Tommy Tuberville. Yes, I do, Colin. Republican Senator Tommy Tuberville of Alabama has finally relented and dropped his protest and has allowed for the promotion of over 400 military officers. Republicans and Democrats in the Senate both criticized Tuberville's actions, saying that without sufficient levels of military leadership at hand, our readiness could be hurt. The Alabama senator's protest came in response to the U.S. military allowing female service members to abort a pregnancy by allowing time off and paying for transportation to a state that allowed abortion services. The protest was seen as an unfair burden to members of the military who had seemingly gained promotions, moved their families to different bases, only to have their promotions put on hold. Not a good look for Senator Tuberville. Damning evidence has come to light that there may have been some insider trading in the stock markets right before the Israel-Hamas war broke out. A pattern identified by researchers Robert Jackson of New York University and Joshua Mitz of Columbia University indicate that investors somehow were able to predict the war and sold stock in Israel's exchange just before fighting broke out. These short sellers then bought the devalued stock back at a cheaper price, pocketing the difference. These short sellers have made an estimated $100 million off of this conflict in what many are calling a disgusting demonstration of insider trading. We'll be right back after this quick commercial break with Rachel and Ivory with our state and local news segments. You are watching The Friday Show. An American metal roof just makes sense. Not only is it permanent, unlike asphalt, it's also guaranteed. And with all the colors and styles available, American metal roofs are stunning. Visit our photo gallery at AmericanMetalRoofs.com and see for yourself. And no, they're not noisy in the rain and they don't attract lightning. Your American metal roof will attract the admiring gaze of friends and neighbors, though. Learn more today. Call 844-METAL-ROOFS or visit our website at... State News. The community of Montrose hosted their annual candle walk last week on Saturday, December 2nd at the Lions Park. Unfortunately, the weather was a rainy 30 degrees, but that did not dim the enthusiasm of everyone in attendance. The Montrose Historical Museum was decked out in its annual Christmas themed best. The same was true for all of the downtown businesses. Scores of crafters and merchants sold their wares to the excited crowds who walked the streets, seeking bargains and seasonal treats. Everyone enjoyed the crowds and the holiday music. Vendors and food trucks did a brisk business. 
Everyone there thought it was a rousing success. Even Santa was there. I sure had fun. Mary Quast is a mother and a wife. She is also a very passionate local novelist. She has written several highly rated books. I recently had the opportunity to talk to Ms. Quast at the book fair. I'm here with local author Mary Quast. Mary, how long have you been writing books? Pretty much for my entire life. I liked to write stories when I was in elementary, um, all the way through high school and college. I started professionally writing in 1999, uh, with the first book being published in 2004. In what genre do you write mostly? Um, it is romance, contemporary romance, a uh, little paranormal, a little fantasy, a uh, little bit of everything. What are your favorite types of stories? I love to read romantic comedy. I mean, falling in love is nice, and to have some laughs is even better. Um, I do like a uh, little bit of mystery, and I will read Stephen King. So, <laughs> What advice would you give to prospective young writers? Write, write, write. Um, keep a journal, even if you come up with, oh, that's a really neat line, write that down. Um, when I, I have a journal and sometimes I'll come up with a one-liner that's really cool, I'll build an entire story around a simple idea. Um, sometimes I'll hear a song lyric and I'm like, that's really cool because in my head I visualize a story, so I'll write that down. But write poetry, write short stories. Even if it's not a full story, you can build around it. But just write. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much for standing up here with me. Thank you. Ivory, I hear you have some very interesting stories. Yes, Rachel, I do. Montrose may be a small town, but there are some very interesting people here. This week, I had the opportunity to talk with one of those very interesting people. Matt Sachety is a champion race car driver as well as a social studies teacher at Montrose Alternative High School here in town. Hi, everyone. I'm Ivory Briggs with MDM TV. Here joining me today, I have Matt Sachety. Matt, tell me, what kind of racing do you do? Yeah, I actually do um, IMCA modified racing. Um, it's on dirt tracks. Um, I used to race pavement many years ago, but that's what I do now. What kind of cars are in this um, type of racing? Um, there's various different types. Um, I race the modified class, which is like a tubular frame car. Um, there's other ones such as street stocks or factory stocks where they look a little more recognizable to the average person. And there's other ones that are full on similar to ours that are full on race cars. And what type of circuit is this? Um, this is actually, we follow it, it's called IMCA, um, which it's a nationwide circuit. Do you want to continue racing in your future? Absolutely, I've been doing it for quite a while now. So you've probably met a lot of your goals already, but what future goals do you have with racing? I just like to continue being competitive and competing locally and then at, um, in other states like we have before um, and just continue that. Have you won any big awards? Um, I've won many different championships, um, many different races, um, and I've also won some some good good awards um, as far as like sportsmanship and stuff like that voted on by other competitors. Do you have like a favorite race that you've done that you can like talk about here? There's many that I've competed over the years. Some some much more meaningful than others because either I've they've been like memorial races and stuff like that. I enjoyed com competing in those. Is there like a big difference between dirt track is and like normal just pavement track? Yeah, there is. There's a big difference. Um, the cars and the chassis are built totally different. Um, the the difference in excitement is quite a bit different, at least in my opinion. I've raced them both. With being an hour away, do you ever travel farther for these competitions? Um, I have, yes. We've traveled to, to New York, um, Florida, Alabama, Iowa. Um, we've been into those, those different states. I can think of right offhand. I've, I've been been to just about every track here in Michigan, just about, um, and I've been many different ones out of state. Okay, thank you. Again, I'm Ivory Briggs with MDMTV.com. You are watching the Friday Show. Charlie Swadden is a senior here at the high school. This week, he was nominated and selected by the Esports League as a recipient of the Sportsmanship Award. This award was granted in association with in his participation in the very popular competition video game, Valorant, which was played by the eSports team during the fall season. Sodden is the only player out of 48 teams to have received this award. Sodden was nominated for this award for his leadership and sportsmanship this season. Congrats to you, Charlie. The holiday season can be a hard time to be apart from your family. This is very true 
whose parents are incarcerated. All Children Are Equal Toy Drive has a mission to make this an easier time for these kids and parents. This toy drive gives toys to kids with the parents who are incarcerated in the Genesee County Jail. This mission was envisioned and created by Genesee County Ambassadors Percy Glover and John L. Allen Bay. This Christmas season marks the fourth year this organization has served its community. What a beautiful way to give back. Now, after this quick commercial break. Is it dinner time? Lunch time? Breakfast time? Well, drop in the Riverside Market in Montrose and Durand anytime. Come to Riverside Market for fresh fruits and vegetables, USDA choice meats, prime dairy products, and all kinds of specials and snacks. Come for a whole range of Spartan Nash, our family products, and don't forget about the bakery and deli. That's Riverside Market in Montrose and Durand. Stop in anytime and don't forget to give us a like on Facebook. Montrose Orchards is a family-owned business located on Seymour Road, north of Vienna Road, that produces a delicious variety of fresh fruits. Check out Debbie's Kitchen, which features fresh baked goods and delicious sweet treats. Be sure to visit the Montrose Orchards Farm Market as well. In the fall, you can pick your own perfect pumpkin from our Pumpkin Patch 2. All this and more is at Montrose Orchards in Montrose, Michigan. Good afternoon. I'm Noah Grossman, professional in college sports. The Lions are 9-3 in the year for the first time since 1962. They are currently in first place in the NFC North by three games after beating the Saints in a high-scoring affair. Final score, 33-28. The Lions will travel to the Windy City to take on the always tough Bears at 1. The Michigan Wolverines are Big Ten champs for the third straight year in a row after taking down the Iowa Hawkeyes by a final score of 26-0. Iowa's offense couldn't seem to catch fire and their defense couldn't hold Michigan's run-heavy offense. Michigan will take a month-long break to prepare for Alabama in the Rose Bowl January 1st. The winner will move to the college football championship game. Now to a more controversial topic. Last Sunday, the college football playoffs were set after the conference championship games on Friday and Saturday. Michigan got the one seed and Washington locked up the two seed. But this is where things get heated. Texas got the third seed thanks to Alabama beating Georgia. Then, with the Bama win, the Crimson Tide got the fourth seed. This left Florida State out of the playoffs. I think the NCAA committee messed up big time leaving them out. A 13-0 squad should make the playoffs always. Sure, they didn't have their first string quarterback or their second string quarterback, but they are undefeated. Luckily, this is the last year for the 14 playoffs, and next year they will be adding the 12 team playoffs. But what about the seniors' goals who were to go undefeated and make the playoffs? Where is their payoff? It is a very bad look for the most popular college sport. Well, that's going to do it for professional and college sports. Now over to Sam with local sports. Sam? Thanks, Noah. I'm Sam with local sports. The boys basketball team played their first game of the season last Friday at Bendel High School. It was a rocky start and even though the Rams pulled down an outstanding 34 rebounds, they fell short by a score of 37 to 54 and a very physical game. The boys also traveled to Bertrand Tuesday night to take on the Panthers. It was a much closer game, but the Panthers prevailed by a score of 55 to 52. That is a close one. The Rams hope to start a winning streak at New Lothrop tonight at 7 o'clock. This game should be good. The game should be available on NFHS Network. The girls varsity basketball team started off their season Wednesday night by trousing the Bendel Tigers by 40 points. Everyone played and enjoyed the win. Keep it going. Next week, I will bring you a complete rundown of all boys and girls bowling action as well as wrestling. This week, I got the chance to talk to a Montrose Middle School student who also happens to be a motorsport racing champion. His name is Charlie Sherman. Let's take a look. Hi, I'm Samantha Stroop here with Charlie Sherman. Charlie, what exact type of racing do you do? Um, I do a lot of ATV racing. I used to do a little bit of uh, dirt bike racing when I was a kid, but now it's just ATV racing. Where is your favorite place to race? Um, well, I have two main favorite places. My main favorite place is either Pine Lake Raceway, located in Ashtabula, Ohio, or Owasso Motorsports Park, which is located in Owasso, Michigan. 
Do you plan on doing this when you're older? Um, yes, I definitely do. I find it very fun. You make a lot of friends along the way, and it's very just great to do. Thank you, Charlie. That's it for local sports. Now over to Eric with high school announcements. Thanks, Sam. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Eric Larkin with announcements for Hill McCloy High School. Spirit Week is next week. Don't forget to wear Monday, Christmas PJs. Tuesday, Santa's hat and crazy hair. Wednesday, class color. Seniors and eighth graders wear red. Juniors and freshmen wear green. Sophomores and staff wear white. Thursday is Santa Helper's Day. Dress as Santa, Mrs. Claus, reindeer, or elves. Friday is ugly sweater or holiday socks. Good luck to the eSports team today. They have a playoff game this afternoon to qualify for the state championship games on Saturday. That's all I have for now. Now over to Colin with a final word. Thank you all for tuning into the Friday show. Before you go, however, we want to welcome back Mrs. Moore, a longtime custodian in the Montrose School District, and after over a year's hiatus, B, as she is known to her friends, has returned after completing treatments for cancer. We are so glad to have her smiling face back on campus. Be well, B. Again, thank you all for tuning in, and make sure to return soon. I've been Callan Oguer, and this was The Friday Show.